Namo Buddhaya. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share today. Today, I shall read a very short reading from Majima Nikaya 131. It says, Today's exertion should be made. Who knows? Maybe death tomorrow. There is no bribing of death and his great armies with promises. Dear Dhamma family, death is a topic which many people are not comfortable to talk about. Death is a topic which many see as taboo and in fact wish to avoid even mentioning. Now, dear Dhamma family, one of the great protections the Buddha taught us, a daily protection, is to recall death, to recall the impermanence of life. The Buddha told us that if we are to realize how impermanent life is and that death is inevitable, only its timing is variable, then we would certainly live our lives, our priorities, quite differently. Dear Dhamma family, I often say, if I were to have one wish, what wish would that be? And I often would reply saying, I wish I know exactly when everyone, not just me, but everyone, every one of us should know exactly when we are going to die. Because if all of us know exactly when we are going to die, we will certainly live our lives very, very differently. The Buddha said, if you know you're going to die, petty quarrels, disagreements, unhappiness will mean nothing to you. We will say, forget it. Most of the things that we fuss over, most of the things that we are unhappy over, are frankly speaking, minor when seen in the overall picture of the brevity of life. So Dhamma brothers and sisters, if all of us are to know exactly when we are going to die, then we will live our lives every moment well, fully, mindfully. And I have a good friend back home in Johor Bahru, a businessman who is successful. He's always worried, he's always anxious over many things. And I used to tell him every morning when I wake up, I'm so grateful that I'm alive and I've got another day to live. And I said, we should all live this day that is available to us well, fully. Use it all, use it well. And I often would ask him, if you know you're going to die today, what will you do today? Do it, I said. And he said, no, la, no, la, cannot, la. I have to plan for the future, I have to plan for this, I have to plan for that, I have to plan for so many things. I said, if you're going to die tonight, and can you guarantee me you're not going to die tonight? All those will actually mean very little. So, dear Dhamma family, the Buddha called it a great protection. If we know exactly when we are going to live and then die, our lives would certainly be lived quite differently. The Buddha would have us know that a universal characteristic is impermanence. We are all conditioned. Everything comes into existence because of conditions and causes. As causes and conditions change, the conditioned state will change. So, dear Dhamma family, as far as we are con concerned, our body is a very, very complex combination of many things. We cannot stop aging. The Buddha taught us in the Anattalakana Sutta, the second discourse that he taught. Can you tell your body not to suffer, not to grow old, not to fall sick? Can you tell your body to do anything like that? Look at ourselves. We can't. The pandemic over the last two years have taught us that we are in no way able to control the internal nor the external environments. We are impermanent and we are anatta. We do not have a permanent self. 
we can't even control this body of ours and it will age on its own accord. It would fall sick when the conditions are there for it to fall sick. So dear Dhamma family, I think that this is a very important lesson for everyone of us to realize that good health is merely the slowest way to die. That good health merely defers that date. So why should we not live our lives fully, doing whatever we can, doing whatever good that we can do, avoiding whatever that is unwholesome, and training our minds. Remember, nobody on the deathbed has ever said, I should have worked harder and earned more money. I should have saved more money for ABC. Everybody on the deathbed will remember my loved ones, the ones that I truly care for. Why did I not spend more time with them? Why did I not provide them with my love instead of running away, drinking with my friends? Why did I not spend my time with my children instead of doing something else which is crazy? I used to tease, golf, gulungan orang yang lupakan family. I think we should spend our weekends with our family and friends rather than swinging, trying to knock a ball into a hole innumerable times. I apologize to my friends who are golf kakis, but I often say, if we have a choice, if we have that opportunity and that condition, we should use whatever time we have, do it with all our best on something wholesome, something that can help. And when we are gone, the only thing that comes along with us are these memories, this karma that we have created. The only thing we bring along is not our material wealth, not this physical body. The only thing we bring along is the good or the bad that we had done. So the Buddha's teaching in verse 183 of the Dhammapada is very simple. Avoid all that is unwholesome. Do all that is wholesome and train the mind. How much time do we have left to do all that is wholesome? No one knows. I don't know. You don't know. How much time do we have to train our mind? I also do not know. So let us use whatever time we have, moment to moment, day by day, well. A dying person suffering from an illness was asked by a visitor. The doctor said, you have three more months before you die. Are you not afraid of this impending state of death? Are you not afraid of this dying process? The person turned around and looked at a friend. At least I know. Three months. What about you? Do you know? How long do you have? Do you have three months? Or three days? Or three weeks? We are all dying. Every one of us. So let us recall lesson number one. We are all very impermanent beings. VIPs. We have time. How much? No one knows. Let us use it well. Let us recall that the only thing that is certain is death. That is certain. The time is uncertain. So the knowledge of impermanence, of anatta, is actually a positive knowledge that will help us, not a negative knowledge that says, ah, oh, all you Buddhist people are so pessimistic. No, it is reality. The Buddha Dharma does not teach us to run away from reality. The Buddha Dharma teaches us to face reality and to handle it well. Thank you very much. Sukhi Hantu.